and welcome to the Long Road Podcast. The journey goes ever on with the Long Road. This episode, Outsiders and Blue Dancing Shoes. Musicians and songwriters are outsiders, never quite fully integrated into the rest of society, and Steve explores this idea a little, tells us some stories from his upbringing, including the, the blue dancing shoes of his youth. Kev's Cafe Corner this week returns for its second outing. Keep listening to find out about Kev's next hot tip for a coffee. Uh, and of course, further news from my, from the Bishes, Kitchen Exploits. The Long Road podcast is exploring the world of the vagabond, the troubadour, the adventurer. The world isn't beige, it isn't processed, it's authentic, it's rich, and it's real. And if those are the sort of sentiments that make your brain light up, then hop on board. We are embracing all of those things, we are celebrating all of that. And we'd love it if you joined us on the journey. Greetings, I'm Chris the Bish Leiden, welcome to the show. Uh, what a week it's been here in the UK, uh, I'm sure similar feelings all around the world as this strange, strange situation we find ourselves in progresses. Um, there's enough talk about that out there right now, so I'm going to leave that mostly to others. Um, the topic isn't going away anytime soon, so no doubt we'll come back to it in the future. For now, look after yourself, look after those around you, stay inside. Um, I must say it was heartwarming and spirit lifting last night here in the uk to hear about and join in uh, the the clap for carers event that happened at 8 p.m last night um the idea being that everyone stands at their open doors or windows and uh, applauds the brilliant nhs staff who are working so hard to combat the the virus remarkable to hear in my neighborhood uh, the the claps the cheers the whoops uh, and as well living in this part of manchester no doubt the uh, the gunshots amongst the, the literal fireworks um so for now everyone stay inside protect NHS workers so they can do their best to help everyone get through this. Anyway, back to the podcast at hand. Big thanks to everyone who listens to this podcast out there in the world. It's great to hear from you with your feedback. Um, we were recently compared by one of our loyal listeners to Radio 4's Thought for the Day, uh, which I'm sure puts us on hallowed ground. Um, I'm not an avid Radio 4 listener myself, uh, a passive upbringing of the archers as a, as a youth um, and to be honest I will consume any Radio 4 comedy that's that's going out or in any form um, but I don't think I've ever listened to Thought for the Day not consciously anyway um, I'm, I'm presuming I'm hoping it's a good comparison um, some people out there are asking so why was Kev the big man more banned from Twitter what's the story gossip monger is a lot of you um, perhaps one day we'll do a, a podcast special on Kev's very special relationship with idiots on the internet. Um, although quite why Kev is banned, but some horrors out there like Orange 45, DT over there in the US, quite literally warmongering and peddling his, his hate. Uh, but Twitter seems fine with that, fine with him staying on board. Um, there are rumours abound that Kev will start up another Twitter account soon, so we'll keep you up to date with that. Uh, one final thing from the, the feedback we've had this week. Some people have noticed the rather particular way that I end up saying dates on this podcast. For example, today is the 27th of March, 2020. I'm a huge fan of Adam Buxton's podcast. Um, check it out if you haven't listened to it. He has what he calls a, a ramble chat with somebody each episode. You know, 30 minutes to an hour normally talking about this and that. Um, the person is often well known, but perhaps not a, a full blown celebrity. Uh, sometimes I'd never heard of them at all, but they're nearly always fascinating, interesting comedian, author, artist, activist, you know, sort of people doing stuff. Um, it's always sort of fun or heartwarming or meaningful or a, a combination of those things. Um, his most recent episode, I think, which was a couple of months ago now, he has little breaks every so often. I think that most recent episode was with, um, it was a chat he had with one of my favourite people on this planet, the glorious Billy Connolly. So go check it out. He's on SoundCloud and all the usual podcast provider places. Um, anyway, so the reason I say dates funny is because for many years, Adam Buxton on his podcast said dates funny. Um, it's the year bit that's the odd bit, you know, 23rd of March, perfectly normal. 2020 is the, is the funny bit. Um, rather than say uh, 2019 or 2020, it's just a little thing that's always amused me, uh, so I borrowed it. And whilst Adam seems to have retired the practice, he's I think he's realised that it's fine to say 2020. Um, I will no doubt continue to use 2020, 2019, uh, until forever and a day, because I am like that. Okay, news. Within the next month, we'll have a brand new four-track EP out. 
and, he says, crossing all of his fingers, um, a video for each of his four songs on the new EP. We are currently working out how we can do a live stream launch event with live music from Kev, the big man Moore from Spain, Steve Bonham from Derbyshire and me uh, in Manchester all at once. A technical challenge, but we are working on it. Um, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash stevebonham01, so you can get the new videos as we release them. Um, keep an eye on our social media. Facebook is our main main outlet, really. Steve Bonham and the Long Road on Facebook. Um, we'll make any announcements there. Uh, and also there is a newsletter coming out very soon. If you want to be included in receiving that newsletter, just head to artisan-creative.com and sign up. So, on to today's podcast content, capital P, capital C. So, Steve is going to bring us some of his thoughts on musicians, composers, songwriters as outsiders, vagabonds, um, never quite fully integrating into society. Perhaps this is a, a feature of their sort of profile, or perhaps it's a result of their approach, or perhaps it's both, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Steve, and I will see you on the other side. Greetings from not-so-solitary confinement. It's a, it's a beautiful day. It's like living in a, a bubble here where I live. It's beautiful outside and yet you can hear the distant thunder of the guns of a world still in a bit of a mess anyway i've been uh, i've been thinking about about songwriters again i think the last few podcasts it's been on my mind and i think musicians and songwriters are kind of all outsiders that's the vagabond they're the people who live on the edge of society and they're not big, brave explorers. They don't head off to distant lands never to be returned or to sail the 17 oceans, and um, that would be several oceans more than there actually are, of course. Anyway, to sail, sail the 17 oceans never to return but to live somewhere in a mystical island. Why am I I'm rambling? I'm rambling. You know, you see, vagabonds live on the edge of the town, on the edge of the village, on the edge of society because they're they're not quite at home there they're still dependent they still interrelate to the to the world they grew up in but in a strange way they're not part of it and you can spot them so, you know they're not just uh hobos on the streets you can spot them by they relate to careers and life uh, life expectations uh, the way they relate to joining things, it's, 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 it's almost like they're inhibited to fully join that around them. And I guess I've always felt like that myself. I've always wondered, uh, why stay, why go? I don't know whether you're born a vagabond, an outsider, or it's thrust upon you. I mean, uh, my grandfather may have been one. He was five foot nothing, who could... Uh, bring a man, a man down with his forehead much bigger than himself, whilst not spilling a drop of his Federation ale with its whiskey chaser. And he was a merchant seaman. He was. Uh, he worked at Swan Hunter, building boilers for the big ships in the 30s and 40s. He was a harmonica player and performer of, of monologues. I, I didn't know him well. He died when I was about five, but I think his restlessness inhabits me sometimes but in particular i think if i've got any outside attendancies <laughs> from my mum uh not because of her because of the way she dealt with the world I, d I do remember she was someone who grew up in great hardship in a warm deep love of geordie family but uh used to hardship used to shortage used to making do used to being careful and when she met my dad and fled down to Derbyshire and and my dad, you know, got by and did what did quite well. She she never lost that that need to be careful about things, which in a world that became increasingly consumeristic to leave me on the outside. When I was born, I was born in a, a terraced uh house on an old street in, in Derby where I think just about everyone else on the street was Victorian. 
uh, they probably were Victorian in their birth, you know. Old, well-upholstered widows, women whose lover had died in the First World War, and old men getting by. It, it, was, it was a strange place. It's now much more upmarket, and uh, lots of university lecturers, I think, live there. But in those days, it was very quiet, and the local school was not... Uh, well, it was in some disarray, and my parents were a bit lost as where to send me. And so I, I had the benefit of going to a, a private school. I am an educated for two years of my life in a private school, as the best they could find. This school was um, Friargate House School. And until the, the year I had been looking for school, it had been, it had been an all-girls school. It had been for maybe 100 years. And I remember my first day at school was going into this this place and knowing instantly I really did not belong. I did not belong here. Uh, I met the headmistress, who was enormous, with two sticks and well-bandaged legs, who lived in a room halfway up a flight of stairs. And the place smelt of cabbage everywhere. Every room smelt of slightly oiled cabbage. Uh, and some of the teachers had not necessarily had the benefit of a full education themselves. But the thing that I think really made me feel I do not belong here was the question of the dance class. For decades, of course, a school like this had provided the young ladies and girls who went there with dancing lessons, of which we were going to have. Now, I was five and very, very shy and pretty quiet in general and my favourite place was a book so the concept of dancing anyway was too horrific but then there were the dancing shoes now the ladies of the school didn't really know what to do with the five or six boys they had now let in amongst their number so we were we were advised we could either have patent leather black shoes for dancing all shiny and well heeled or we could have dancing pumps, which were blue and plastic with elastic around the, the top to keep them on your feet. Of course, five of the boys' parents saw the obvious and bought the, uh, the shiny shoes. And then my mother got the cheaper option. And so I turned up with my white knobbly knees in my shorts, my blazer, um, and my shirt and tie and on my feet for the dance lessons were these blue plastic shoes. I'm not sure my spirit has ever fully recovered. But being the son of immigrants into Derby started me off as an outsider, uh, a place I think I've always remained. But what do outsiders do? Outsiders on the edge of society... They're observers. They have maybe, at their best, clearer eyes. They see the relationships and the theatre acting out before them. If they're creative, they paint a picture of what they see. They can ask the awkward question. And sometimes, because maybe they're less engaged with the day-to-day -day fuss and rush of what's going on, they can see the beauty a moment of truth in the mundane. I think any good songwriter needs to have a bit of that. That standing back, maybe even treating themselves as an actor on this wobbly stage. Being able to create from the stories and things that arise around them, moments of truth and songs that matter. Of course, this is the heart of great songwriters like Dylan and Leonard Cohen, their ability to be at once within a society and on the edge and outside of it, that's what makes them great. My granddaddy built the ships that sailed the sea, built them very long and taught the king's navy. Watched them sailing down the tide, sailing out of view. A boiler smith and a walls and man from the town. The 
town I never knew Wondering versus waistcoat and a humber cat Monologue and music all the old soft shoe and tap He didn't run when times got hard Mended radios Carved our crosses for the old churchyard In the times that seem not so long ago He was leaving the town I never knew The one I'm driving through Today. And I'm leaving the town he never knew The sun comes shining through, but I couldn't stay He was just a little man with a great big heart Played the dancers, worked all day in Swan Hunter's yard Left the north and he moved down south Died when I was about five The engineers on a Saturday night To keep himself, keep himself alive He was leaving the town I'm driving through today And I'm leaving the town he never knew The sun comes shining through But I couldn't stay My granddad he built the ships that sail the sea Built and very long and tall the King's Navy Horned and glasses, waistcoat and a humber hat Monologue and music called the old soft shoe and tap He was just a little man with a great big heart Played the dancers, worked all day in Swan Hunter's yard My granddaddy built the ships that sailed the sea Town I Never Knew from Steve's album Moonside Tide, which was recorded over in Kong in Ireland back in 2012 now. Um, it features the awesome whistle playing of Stephen Doherty there. Um, so I, I also wanted to play a, a more recent track from The Long Road. Um, in these strange times, people turn to music and the arts. Um, in a, I bet Netflix and Amazon video have, have felt the pinch on their servers with everyone needing entertainment whilst on lockdown here in the UK. Um, music is something that's integral to just about any society on the planet. Uh, and as we talked about last week, even in the darkest of times, good things can come from it uh, with perseverance and determination and you know you gotta you gotta make things happen um so you know very loosely linked with that theme here is our song called won't lay my guitar down from our album girl with a rattlesnake heart from a couple of years ago this one was written by steve and kev um, and we recorded it at the fabulous woodworm studios a couple of years ago so here we go won't lay my guitar down Stood my ground in Berlin I got stoned in a Spanish bar Left alone all with Mary Lou In the backseat of my car Called a son and a young man By a loser half my age Been robbed by cheating angel, yeah As I stumbled off the stage the dawn a crying It's a lonesome kind of sound One thing you can never say of me Is I laid my guitar down, down, down Yeah, down Down 
chased out of Memphis Cause the singer played the fool Took my bows way past midnight New Orleans to Liverpool Knew the course to Blue Bayou Walked on home with Miss Carousel Drunk a while with wild old Johnny Just to hear him ring his bell Heard the dawn a crying It's a lonesome kind of sound One thing you can never say of me Is I laid my guitar down, down, down Podcast listeners around the world, uh, welcome to Kev's Cafe Corner once more. This is the second of uh, hopefully a fairly um, long series of my observations of some of my favourite cafes that I've visited on my travels around the world. Um, this week, for obvious reasons, I'm going to um, mention a cafe in the beautiful town of Bergamo in Italy who have suffered so very much with the the pandemic of late absolutely horrific things that are going on there and i want to just share some beautiful memories of that place from a more peaceful time bergamo is a beautiful beautiful town and it's sort of split into two parts there's a there's the sort of main town with all the usual 
big shops and the train station and what have you. And the old town is kind of hidden away up on a hill that you can access by a funicular, the beautiful little red pillar box painted um, carriages that uh, head up on this vertiginous rail line up the side of the hill and uh, through various tunnels and glass windows on all sides so you can see the rest of the town spreading out below you as, as you head up there. And it brings you out into this wonderful medieval sort of town of, of, of small alleyways and beautiful little shop fronts and pink vespers and uh, there's like a lavender flower shop with a lavender painted bike outside and beautiful little um, artisan pizzerias with, you know, those, those kind of square pizzas that they have there in, in Italy. And a lovely cathedral with fantastic architecture and uh, tremendous statues. It's a particularly striking one of, of John Paul, the Pope, or the old Pope or whatever. And um, they're next to the where the funicular comes out, the station at the top, if you take a hard left, you can go into this cafe, which has a beautiful terrace and you can see out over the whole of the city and a little like the cafe I mentioned in the last episode um, on the player it's it's one that attracts all the little uh, birds to fly in and, and perch on your chairs and, and on the edge of the balcony and it's one of my favourite cafes in the world you can sit there and have a really nice Italian coffee and perhaps some biscotto and really look out over a beautiful part of Italy and um, and I found it very peaceful and, and just, just a beautiful moment. And I just want to send good vibes out to the people of Bergamo who are very friendly. It was such an amazing place to visit. I've been there several times. I was there on a holiday and also I was there on business when I was doing a, a big festival with my other band Witch Cross up in Alta Piano um, in the area. And it was just such a beautiful place to stay. And I recommend a visit when all this madness is over to that beautiful cafe at the top of the funicular in Bergamo. Highly recommended. Check out photos of it on the net. It's really lovely. And um, see you guys next week. <laughs> Now, I've never been to Bergamo myself, but hearing Kev talk about it here, I think I shall have to add it to my list of, of destinations to travel to. For the future, obviously, right now we're in lockdown, can't go anywhere, but for the future. Thanks, Kev. Looking forward to hearing more from you in the coming weeks. So this week has been about pizza on the Bishop's Daily Bread, to mixed degrees of success, if I'm really honest. So I found this recipe for what was probably a very good pizza dough uh, online, but I just wonder if my flat is too cold for the dough to prove properly. Maybe that's the thing. Um, and perhaps using the radiator perhaps gets it too hot, I don't know. This recipe was one that you made one night for use the next night, basically, sort of 24 hours of proving or rising or whatever the, the term is. Um, and for the doubters amongst you, I dispensed with the bread machine for this task. All the mixing and kneading and everything was done by hand. The recipe was slightly odd, though. Uh, you know, the usual ingredients in mostly usual amounts. But there was one quantity that just blew my mind. The yeast for the recipe, the required amount was, wait for it, 0.2 grams. 0.2 grams. I mean, what? <laughs> That's like the whole 60 milligrams of vitamin C all over again. Who the heck has scales that weigh 0.2 grams of anything? How much yeast is that? It's, it's like, it's, it's a breath. It's crazy. I mean, as it turns out, I actually do have scales that measure in such small divisions. Um, so I, I duly measured out 0.2 grams of yeast. Oh, and I'm not 100% sure what sort of yeast to use. I mean, I've got two now in the cupboard. There's the sort of fast quick, easy, powdery yeast, I don't know what it's called, and then the, uh, is it active, dried, more like little balls, not a fine powder yeast? This recipe asked me to mix the yeast and the water and oil together before adding it to the flour. So I went for the active dried yeast, the little balls, 
as it seemed to be the one to use if you mix with the water first. But guess what 0.2 grams of, of yeast looks like? Bloody nothing. A handful of these little balls of yeast. You know, it was insane. But I went with it, you know, and actually the dough was fine. The first pizza I made from it probably, I probably didn't do the final resting properly. But it was good, you know, it was not quite as crispy as I'd like. But then this got me thinking about my recent crispy dinner roll experiments and whether whether I should use more water when it's baking to get a crispier dough. So the next pizza I made the next day, I threw some ice cubes in the bottom of the oven whilst it baked. And actually probably this was a little bit crispier, perhaps. But the dough was a day older. I don't know if I don't know how much effect another day has. But I also think I r- actually really need or want an oven that could go super hot like a proper pizza oven. You know, my oven takes an age to get to max around, you know, 240, 250 Celsius. So perhaps I'll never quite be able to achieve at home that glorious, crispy and light base I'm yearning for. But I shall continue to endeavour. Anyway, um, so maybe next week I'm going to investigate this Swiss suggestion from my pal Amy from a couple of weeks ago, Zopf. Assuming, of course, that I have or can get the um, requisite ingredients for baking by then. Who knows? Thanks for listening, podcasts. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're enjoying it, recommend it to a friend. We're available on SoundCloud, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. So hopefully lots of avenues for people to get to get to hear us if they want to the next episode will be out next week friday the 3rd of april 2020 social media as always find steve bonham and the long road on facebook that's our main social media channel check out our youtube channel youtube.com slash steve bonham one remember all of our music is on spotify and apple music so go have a listen if you like what you hear consider purchasing something to help keep these independent artists afloat so thank you once again brave adventurers vagabonds and explorers remember the world isn't beige it's authentic it's rich and it's real embrace every last bit of it until next time the journey goes ever on with a long road bye for now Thank you.